Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. This is Tor Torn Tuesday, your weekly dose of all things Lord of the Rings, Hobbit, Ringers, books, movies, games, board games, video games, Lord of the Rings on DVD, Ralph Bakshi, Peter Jackson, J.A. Bayona, everything for Lord of the Rings. This is Including your weekly stop. That, 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 list, that list now includes J.A. Bayona. No, I just that's, said that. But that's fantastic. No, but let's remark on that for just a moment. And welcome to the One Ring.net. This is the Torn Tuesday show that you are looking for. Yes, this is the podcast you're looking for. And Cliff, but you brought the board game. Of I have Lord brought the, the board Rings, game. I have brought the board game. We have. We but have. We're going to set it up, and you're going to teach me how to play the Lord of the Rings board game. How many devices and iPods do I have in my pocket? It's crazy. I can't wait to show you this. You have, I have a ring brought, in your pocket. I have brought though. something with an add add to the list of wonderful people who have ada adapted. Whoa, that sounded like thunder from Olympus. Thunder. You well, you brought out the game and it excited the elder it, gods. It, it was, uh, or Imagine Dragons. It just sounded like thunder was happening. Okay. But look at this. Uh, out of all of that, wah, wah, out of all these people in the world who have <laughs> taken their hand to adapting. J.R.R. Tolkien, adapting yes. Tolkien to another medium. Yes. J.A. Boyona is added to the list. Amazing, with Peter Jackson, Ralph Bakshi, and others. You know, it, the Wait, Beatles... Is, is the, this based on Bayona's Lord nope, of the Rings? No, but this is a classic game designer. He's a German, a multiple award-winning German game designer named Reiner Knizia. Okay. And he is super well-known to Lord of the Rings fans already for having created... These adaptations, uh, at least two or three of them, of the Lord of the Rings in beautiful, really elegant, elegant board game design. Is this no a two-player, a three-player, or a four-player? This is a particular Lord of the Rings game. It's also published by Fantasy Flight Games. It is called The Confrontation. It is a unique two-player miniature game. It's a quick format, quick little battle game of memory and bluffing. And it's Lord of the Rings done like a Stratego light. And All you'll right. really love it. Oh, I cool. love Stratego. It's so cool. Yeah, can't, can't wait to say Strategy. Uh, str Stratego. Str 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 Stratego. One of the great elements of X Files fans is right. Stratego. Well, while Everybody you set that. this up, yeah, I'll let you set up this game uh, for a couple minutes, and I'll give you all the headlines as we've heard them. Um, the latest and greatest from Amazon's Lord of the Rings. Uh, the headlines. brief update is. We've got a billion-dollar Lord of the Rings TV series in production right now. There's a cast and crew of hundreds uh, gallivanting all over Auckland, New Zealand, and areas, filming uh, various things in the forests, in the fields, in the meadows, on sound stages, in the water. Huge set pieces like we haven't seen since Titanic. It comes in Giant tights. water tanks. There's going to be the, the, the opening... Episode one, which they are filming right now, is going to have a huge underwater water battle scene. We haven't seen any ships, but there is there is dunk tanks and there is so much going on. We have a cast of relatively unknowns um, that are true relative, relative unknowns, relative unknowns that, that, that have a good reputation on stage, on screen. In, uh, in theater. You could say that the largest name or the, the most recognizable name includes a couple of Game of Thrones actors, and, but the most recognizable person who was part of the cast is already gone and has left the cast. And so we have these new actors um, and we have leaked uh, f uh, script material from the auditions. We actually have leaked well, audition those, tapes. Those are audition, that we had. Uh, audition scripts may not be representative, but I'm going to let you set up this board game. Oh yeah, I'm going to so, set this up so in two seconds. Can, so but I'm, just, I'm, I'm adding that to the list of amazing things that we've been reporting on. Yes. We have been reporting on that. Every little thing that comes our way, the one ring.net is so happy to bring back to you. We, and are, we, we hear a you lot know, of... We're here for. Uh, 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 we, ha we hear a lot of whispers on the air, and we don't report on everything because... Uh, well. You know, we can't validate everything. There's a bunch of people that just are in it for the clout. Twitter accounts that DM us and Instagram accounts that say, hey, this is happening. I sh thought you should know. But if no one else we can back it up, then it's no point in, in, in making fake news all over again. Well, like we, we wait. We try to wait until we hear it from multiple people. And that's how, we, that, that's how we've always operated. Like, it, you validate... 
everything you hear. And as of today, we've heard from multiple, multiple sources. And based on our own research of, of looking into um, Twitter accounts, IMDb accounts, and everything like that, Amazon and, and has let go of the entire writer's room for Lord of the Rings. What? Oh, everyone's gone. Their plan, what? Their plan is to bring in a whole new writing team Are you for season two. freaking kidding me? Right now, Are as we speak me? today, as they film this, season one is on hiatus. They are not filming season one. They are filming a, a, a pilot that, ha, that, that may or may not... I thought they were filming maybe two episodes. Maybe two episodes, we had reported but they're, the, maybe but they're one? not shooting season one. It's on, officially on hiatus. The writing team for season one has let go, and Amazon is actively looking for new writers to join a brand new writing wow. room for season They've two. They've let the writers go. And we've been wait, talking wait a about this for they're, the last... They're, laun they're launching a billion-dollar Lord of the Rings TV series set in Middle-earth, and all their writers, they just let them all go? That's right. The, the, that, wait, uh, uh, what? Now, Wait, if, if you remember, if you guys remember watching the appendices of The Hobbit shocking. and Lord of the Rings, you'll know that even during production, the actors were getting script revisions and fresh script pages while they were filming because the writers, Philippa Boyens and Fran How? Walsh and Peter Jackson, were constantly revising the scripts to make it as good as possible based on what they were filming. Yes. And this is yeah, normal we, we, we for they, every TV show. Yeah, we that, know that they worked continuously, yes. And, but this is normal for every TV show yes. that the writers are always writing because yes, something course. might happen on set, a happy accident, that a great performance that well, leads uh, to a character revelation that the writers did not anticipate and says, let's explore that aspect a little bit more. Also, I'll, let, let's go back to Westworld. The, the season one, episode one pilot of Westworld featured a, a wonderful actor that was the card dealer. And um, the, the intent of Westworld was to use that character throughout the whole season into a huge re revelation at the end. Unfortunately, the actor died just as they finished the pilot episode. So the writers, who were still employed, <laughs> uh, had to rewrite the entire season to put his storyline into another character, introduce another character, because the, the actor was gone, and they weren't going to replace the actor because his, he, he was just a wonderful thing. So uh, you, th this is all behind-the-scenes machinations that you know you find out after the fact. Here's the thing, is that we're finding it out now that Whatever has happened with the scripts for season one of Lord of the Rings, the, the, those scripts are in uh, cold storage. The season one is on a hiatus. And as far as we've heard, it's an entire, they're looking for an entire new writing team for season two. This explains, perhaps, the reason why one of the lead writers on the series was on Twitter two, two weeks ago, or something like that, begging for a job with a video game adaptation. When, when well, we were- not begging, there were-, there were there, But, the, the but actually, playfully saying, hire me, guys. I don't mean well, that, I mean like playfully saying- I think- She was like, yeah, hey, you know. I, she, she actually was on Twitter saying, when, when we assumed she was on a five season commitment- Right. Then all of a sudden, one of their lead writers from Lord of the Rings is on Twitter saying, hmm. I got time I'd to, love work to work on something. I, I'd love to go work on something else. That'd be great. So, I mean, being solicitous of getting that position of, of writing for another video game movie. And that is now answered. That, that is now a puzzle piece that I didn't understand, that I now and, and comprehend better we, in you context. Know, if, you if you look at but this is shocking. any of the writers that this have is social media, this is you shocking. Know, while they were writing Lord of the Rings, very they shocking. were obviously very off of Twitter. They weren't posting anything. But a lot of them have had a ton of time in the last three months. And they're on Twitter every day, you know, 10 posts every day, you know, being a part of the conversation, as a lot wow. of us are, the, 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 the society <clears throat> conversation. So... 
Uh, this but is a big red flag that they, they're, the writers are gone and they're not in New Zealand doing script revisions and making the pilot the best it can. I mean, imagine if you're in the writer's room and, an, and Amazon says, hey, we're going to cast Will Poulter as Elrond, maybe Elros too. And as, an, as a writer, you're thinking, all right, I'm going to write to the strengths of that actor because I know him. And when he, when Will left the show, yes. now the they've got these scripts that had Will Poulter in mind you know that, that, that are, are useless. This is so strange. This piece of news is so strange. The response here from the live audience, who have and very welcoming to have you guys here joining us on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitch, and on Periscope Live and Twitter and Instagram Live. Welcome to the One Do you know what? To go again from the top of the show, for those people who have just dialed in right now, Justin has just shocked me. Even gentle Clifford, quick beam, your gentle host. Your board game expert. My, you're, you're, you're blowing me out of the water with this, out, I would say, surprising, eyebrow lifting. Wow, they've, the people at Amazon Studios who are deep in the throes of principal photography, I would assume. They're in the middle of principal photography. They're down there with active crews because we just had spy reports coming in uh, 10 days ago from friends That's in New right. Zealand who said, they're we saw this. They're, they're down there filming. Some, they're filming and something. Then, uh, they're, they're, they're filming this huge franchise taking on a, a perilous responsibility to tell Tolkien's stories of Middle Earth to all of us, the eager audience waiting for them, making a unique unprecedented deal with Tolkien's living estate, his grandchildren, who are watching over and monitoring this. They're making this situation go from uh, strange to even far, far weirder, that they have fired all of their writers. Does that also does, mean, does, th does that also mean, please clarify for me, good sir, that J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay the original nope. two showrunners are also nope, off the job? They're still Who on. Who else is fired off the job? What's the, going nope. on over there? J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay are still showrunning the show. Okay, wow. It, but, now, now it's but, interesting but because the have, writers that they let go have come from shows like Breaking Bad and Hannibal and, and yes. Fringe and have worked yes, with they have. many of our Lord of the Rings actors on other shows. All of those no. people are gone, but J Patrick and J.D., are still show running it, and they have zero production experience. Zero. That's a big this zero. This is intriguing. They have never intriguing. had a script produced. They have never made a movie or a TV so, show. So we um, are in the hands of So is this, of, is this normal? Is this normal? Then for them to say we're going to film a couple of episodes, that they said we're going to take a break for a few months. But that, they didn't say how long that would be. We don't know. But really, I've been hearing rumors that it might be a, a longer break than expected. But why? Why this? Why this strange? That's not the only why thing. Why this strange process of hiring all the people, bringing all the attention to these people with that clip that they with released that for us? With that video clip, and and which was not meant for us, the fans. Again, it was but meant they for published the it exhibitors at the convention at I CinemaCon. I disagree with that because it wasn't they wouldn't the have put it on social it, media if they was, didn't want everybody was made, to know. It was made for CinemaCon. And but Cliff, it that's not all, exhibit, that's not the only bad news. Not only are the writers gone, why is this Shippy is officially off the project? What happened? Where? What? What have you been hearing? He's gone. He's all, He's done with the project. Tolkien he, scholar who wrote author of the century, Tom Shippy. Yes. Universally embraced and ad, uh, admired Tolkien scholar who is on the up the most wonderful. A, a level of reaching out to fans at conventions and, and, and has the most wonderful style with his erudition on Tolkien. And he was a, You're a, telling me a, he's a, off the project? A linchpin for the fan community to say this, this yeah, show say is the in least. good hands. He, yeah. he was the anchor, the rock that, that, uh, that comforted fans and, and when his, they his, announced the show, they said, you his, know what, as long as they've got Shippy and John Howe, we're in good hands. All the fans those have hands been saying that. Are gone. Those, How do you know this? Those those hands are where gone. Did, where Shippy has 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 really? gone to a couple events and has confirmed that his role with Lord of the Rings was no longer required, and he's off the project. 
And we are hearing that more people that were in that video are wow. off the project. But until I get confirmation from any of them Tell me. that they're Tell officially me. off, like I'm not going to name any more names, but ha really? all I'm saying is that that video you mean of like the creative team that we saw, yeah? half of them are gone. What is that? Why would this be so? Any thoughts? Let us speculate now, which is what we Let's do. Let's not speculate on this because show. we're getting. A hotline. Let us speculate We're getting on a what text message happening. saying, "Does this new info move the release date for Amazon's show?" Yes, it does. It right certainly now, should. Right I now, the they were show do... is not in production. It yes. is on hiatus. It's not in production. That's... They're going to be out this year, and we don't even have a guess that it's going to be out next year. This is completely uh, uh, converse to what we have been reporting for months and months that they were deep into it and were going on to months of production to get a first season really ready to go. And now they cut back and they said only recently in news that they were only gonna do a couple of episodes, maybe, and then take a break. And now you're telling me they've lost all those creative people, half, half the people from that video? And Tom Shippey is no longer in it? Whoa, breaking news. This is mind blowing. This is totally mind blowing. Wow. Um, do you know what that's like? It's like having um, Steven. But there's what are It's they, like having what? Steven Spielberg on as your director for an Indiana Jones movie, and then he just decides he's not going to do it, and your Indiana Jones movie is going to be made by someone else. I mean, do you know what I mean? Hey, That's hey. the best analogy I can give you. I mean, if you've lost your if, if, your Indiana Tolkien scholar, and if you fired your writers, and if you lost your lead actor, Will Lock. Poulter, yep. and you've but what the hell and, is going and, on and down the, there? And some of the creative team has already walked. And your and your lead stunt woman gets her head busted open, dis dismayingly yeah. hurt in an on-site injury. Galadriel stunt double, as far as we've heard. What's really? Whoa! This is a whole lot of bad news. I think. Uh, maybe maybe there's another way so, to look so at people, it. Maybe so, there's so another way to look at this. People in the chat room are asking. I don't know how where, else to look at this. Where are this. your sources? What are you hearing? So. Uh, okay. We have yeah, heard, what are we have your heard sources? From I want to ask multiple the same. people that e their jobs are at risk. Amazon is a big, powerful company. Yeah. Uh, so we've heard from multiple people who don't know each other and don't know that they're talking, uh, this is saying the same things. Um, but if you go and well. look at all the news articles over the last three months, uh, look at key phrases that have been announced when Amazon in December said they have greenlit season two. At the bottom of that press release, yeah. it says season one is officially on hiatus. So Amazon yeah. has been telling us yes. this, but it's never, all the pieces have been intentionally placed different ways, so the whole picture is not put together. And Until you look at it with some additional information. You know, after being- So Amazon already told us that the show is on hiatus. Yes, they did. We knew that from their And lips, what they're shooting now lips. may not even ever be shown. Do you, what? What Wh they're filming now might never be shown? A little bit of history, okay? A little bit of history. Bra uh, the Game of Thrones pilot that they made was scrapped, was thrown away. I've was heard rumors of that. Was recast. It's not a rumor, I've it's heard real. Many rumors Ga of that. The Game of Thrones pilot was thrown away and they started completely fresh. And we've told you this many times. One, the third person in command of Lord of the Rings right now is Game of Thrones third person in command, Brian Cogman. So they're doing the same thing with Lord of the Rings that they did with Game of Thrones. It's like, let's do, let's shoot a pilot, let's see how it looks. If it's bad, we'll throw it away and start fresh, which is what they did with Game of Thrones. Um, so, look, Game of Thrones turned out really well. And take your time. We're not in a rush. We don't need this right now. Take your time. Quality over profits. Let's get there. Let's, let, 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 you know, We're whatever you yeah. need. If, if you're not happy with the writer's room that was assembled, and you're not happy with the way the story was fleshed out and, s and scripted, um, someone is making good decisions. I will tell you this, in the two years that they have made that the, the deal, in the two years, Amazon has fired three presidents of production. We're on our, we're yes. on our third executive that 
is yes. in charge of production. Yes. The, the executive that made the deal with the Tolkien estate, she no longer works uh, with Amazon. Um, That's so correct. Currently, that is correct. The, the current person in charge at Amazon is Jennifer Salky. Mm -hmm. And she is she's kind of the executive producer on, on, on the studio side, and she's managing all she's that. She's the actual head. She's like, you know, the head head of the whole studio. Yeah, Kim Rudolph in the chat room says, pilot episodes are often scrapped if the studio doesn't like it, and the show is forced to refilm. This is not a new thing. Star Trek, Game of Thrones. Um, that's not yeah. what I'm worried about. So, Kim, what are you worried about? Let me uh, put it in the chat. Give us a text. What are you worried about if that's not what you're worried well, about? Because, again, I'm not worried about it. Like, if, if, if they don't like you're the not, scripts... You're not worried about it. You're not worried about all this stuff that, that, I mean, maybe there is another way of looking at it, like I said a minute or two ago. But to contextualize this for our fans and for the audience who wants to understand a lot of the business side of show business... That it might not it, contracts and it, business. It, 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 it might not be entirely clear, but they are, A, up front, risking a lot of money on a very expensive license. Whatever they're doing, they want to make sure they do it according to those terms so they don't lose the license. Isn't that the number one concern? The number maybe? one thing for Jeff Bezos, who's a, a diehard Lord of the Rings fan. Hey, Axel Scott says hello from New Zealand. Hi, Axel. Hello. What there. have you seen? Hello. What have you Call been seeing down in New Zealand? Call us anonymously. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. So, uh, Call us anonymously. Uh, Joe Placentia, Placentia, Placentia says, one of the actresses on the new Lord of the Rings just tweeted last week, I can hereby attest that LOTR on Prime will be spectacular. That's all for now. It doesn't sound like it's going to be bad, so I'm not worried. Well, awesome. We're Philippe. The you winds. know what? Good night from Belgium. Hello. Um, Cliff. Uh, well, welcome, everybody, from around the world. And show I appreciate business. people from Belgium, New Zealand, from England. Hello, my, my friend Kieran, who's contacting us from Wales at one in the morning. Thank you for staying awake late across the hemispheres of this beautiful blue marble. Thank you for being with us to talk about this. This is news. I am shocked to because, because I would say... Like, the word unexpected is one of the most favoritest, favoritest words in all of Tolkien fandom because it represents an unexpected party. The first chapter of The Hobbit, which is the book, then the first movie was an unexpected journey in honor of that term. And now we have this very unexpected news that what we thought was a pretty... Hello, s Denmark. Hello, Denmark. What we thought was a pretty stabilized and well-oiled machine that Amazon Studios had put together, giving us the impression from their, their own Twitter their and own Instagram, Twitter and video. giving us the impression that they had a great group of people put together, right? And now they're all canned, and they're not even working there anymore. Nick and they're, they're actively filming, actively with Mr. Bayona, sharing pictures on Instagram of where they're filming, and we have spies showing us where they're filming in the forests of the North Island. And so, where, so, what's so Cliff, going on? what do you, what do you say about this? Uh, Nick in the chat room what's says, What's going on with the people I, leaving the production? I highly doubt this thing is going to be amazing without Tom Shippey, like the man is perfect. Is yeah. That, is that your opinion? My, my opinion is that they hired David... Hi, France. Hello, France. Remember the elvish linguist who was the professional that Peter and Fran hired? Yes. David Sallow. Yes. He made sure that the elvish inscriptions were correct, that were carved into sting itself. He made sure that the, the, what the artists made at Weta and what came out of the mouths of Hugo Weaving and Liv Tyler was, you know, real, that, real elvish that was as close to the vocabulary and the, the erudite scholarship that made that elvish correct. And let's not and forget, you're, you're for, for, forget uh, Philippa Boyens and Fran Walsh wrote original songs that Tolkien had not authored. Yes. And they went on and won the Grammy and won the Oscar won the for writing yes, original elvish songs. And here is, here is their, their professional, Tom Shippey, who is so erudite and such a gentleman and a scholar. He is mostly, mostly in my mind. So one, of the, one of the most 
accessible and friendly of Tolkien scholars that I've met in my professional career of 20 years in, in the Tolkien world. Tom Shippey to be lost off of this project and the writers to be gone and going from a full season to only two episodes. And now you're telling me there's only gonna be maybe this one that might just be trashed, a pilot that is shelved away. A camera and, test. An what is this? Test. What is the, yeah, it's a very, very, very expensive camera test, and I must say it represents at least, if not something worrisome, it is a troubling waste of resources and time because this is unexpected. I disagree. It's, it's I disagree. All unexpected. I disagree. Very because, unexpected. And I'll get into that one second. It I, is troubling. I, I just want to know, think. without Shippy on set, who is the adult in the room? That's what I'm saying. All he right, is he's the go. resource I'm talking about. He is among the many resources. Wait, we didn't even know whether people Are you were done setting up? Are we ready to play? Well, I'm going to show you how it works. Okay. But you you have to set up your own pieces in secret. Okay. But let me tell you, this news is intriguing, but it is it is probably not not cool in the, at the end of the day because you thought that all this alignment of money and resources would have been more fruitful? Yes. I'm just saying, am I crazy in thinking this would have been a more fruitful effort to get Mr. Bayona and to get all those artists and writers and people and to cast Maybe these people? Maybe they're doing the best work of their career. Well, Maybe with their, hey, I got an answer from Kim Rudolph in the wow. chat room. Thank you for responding. So Kim in the chat room says, I'm worried about Amazon running out of time and pushing out a crappy show in order to retain the rights. And I'm worried about them That's firing an, Tom Shippey because it means they might be drifting further from Tolkien's vision. Yeah. That is those. That sums up the concerns of the majority of fans. Yeah, I would um, agree. I agree so, with that 100. percent So let's how go. Can, how so can you what are they filming? I'll tell you what they're filming, Cliff. When they signed this deal two years ago, in in, in the fall of 2017, in the contract, and it was publicly stated in the contract that Amazon had to be in production within two years. Yes, they did. Why did they put that clause in? To not have another situation like Guillermo del Toro had. What do you mean? To not have the misfortune of uh, people being stuck in, a, in, a, in the quicksand of nothing happening and being sunk into uh, problems that would prevent it from happening and then losing it. I mean, th there was a serious problem with the Hobbit production and they lost their director because at the time MGM, United Artists, went bankrupt, had a bankruptcy financial implosion nightmare that stopped production on all James Bond movie stuff and Hobbit movies at the same time because of rights and court things and, and BS that had to go so on. So after three years of pre-production so work, much, and all some the of stalling. the best design work of yes. Weta's career, he, uh, Guillermo moved his entire family, including his young children, put them in new schools in New Zealand. Yes. And it was the ultimate heartbreak, probably the biggest heartbreak of his career, yes. which is still growing strong after winning the Best Picture Oscar, yep. um, is, is he had to leave The Hobbit because uh, there was no go-ahead to film the show. And the go-ahead the, the go could not be given because of legal entanglements, and that's why that with MGM, particularly, and New Line Cinema couldn't make The Hobbit without MGM still holding onto their original rights from The Hobbit from so long so ago. So, so the Tolkien estate demanded, demanded. that by contract, this had to be in production within two years to prevent the loss of any quality creative people. Yes. Uh, just like what happened. And Indeed. Get, and, and guess what happened? That two year. Ironically. Uh, they lost. They ended up losing their number one biggest star, Will Poulter, because the show was not going forward as planned. The schedules were slipped. Amazon cannot give Will Poulter a definite schedule. So the thing that they were trying to prevent by having a two-year lock is the exact thing that has created the same issue. They lost a strong talent. Indeed. And, and here's and this. More. This comment from a uh, very, very perceptive from Imran Akhtar in Facebook chat saying, I wonder... If it has something to do with Jeff Bezos' recent trip to New Zealand, maybe from a pure business perspective, he didn't see enough progress. Yes, that, I think, uh, yep, it, that might be part of it. I think progress is moving forward. The pro I think the problem was, um, again, 
total conjecture now is Jeff Bezos went down to New Zealand because someone on his set of Lord of the Rings got critically injured with a head injury that will be out the rest of the year. A quality actress who is about to take a star turn in the new Mortal Kombat series, as Sonya Blade, who was the stunt double of the main characters in Aquaman, and who was the stunt double of potentially Galadriel, the main character of this. Wow. So there is, there is a huge accident. They don't report the accident to the New Zeal Zealand Film Commission. For a week. And they only reported it after a reporter found out, mm -hmm. called up the New Zealand Actor Safety Commission, said, hey, what's going on with the uh, accidents? And Amazon suddenly came clean. Next thing you know, Jeff Bezos is on a private plane to New Zealand to figure out what's going on. Like, Jeff Bezos went to New Zealand as, as soon as this started to become a thing to find out, how are people getting hurt on my set? When we know for a fact that... Uh, stunties of New Zealand are some of the most qualified people. Indeed they uh, are. Joe Placentia says, I joined a little late, so not sure if this has been answered. What are your sources regarding the firing of all writers? Are they directly involved in the production? So we've heard from multiple people, and there's been multiple press releases of different topics over the last three months. That And, and if you follow any of the writers on Twitter, you'll see that they have a lot of free time on their hands. Yes. They're not in the writer's room. They're not actively involved in this project. So They're looking for work. And now we've heard that Amazon is actively looking for a new writing team. So if you have a measure of quality, if you've written screenplays that have even produced at the independent level, if you've published <laughs> books even independently, now's your chance. Call your agent. Tell them to put your work in front of Amazon. Now, now is your moment wow. to get in the writer's room. And this is, we're piecing together a lot of little things. You know, Amazon said the show's on hiatus, and then they said, hey, we're looking for new writers. And then they said, uh, Bayona is gonna wrap up filming in April and then come back and, and we're gonna have a new writer's room and we're gonna explore season two. Why are they exploring season two with new writers does that mean that they didn't like what they got for season one? What, why wouldn't they just announce that they're taking a break and the same writers are coming back after the holiday, Nolan, after their break? Nolan Brian Lynch, great to see you in the chat. I promise you, he says, I promise you, the scripts are written, already written, and the writers are on hiatus for a few months. But what we've heard ah, is that Nolan. They're, they're bringing in new writers for season two and they're filming right now. And every movie and Hello, television Nigel. show that we've been a part of, that I've worked on, and all the behind the scenes that we've seen is that you have writers continually writing during production. Peter Jackson famously was delivering new script yes, yes, pages. Yes, yes, yes. There, there is something to that process. That discipline is something that happens in filmmaking in a very unique way. Hey, we're going to call on the hotline. Let's, let's but, see who's but, calling. But, 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 but Hi, who's calling? Hello, this is Brennan. Hey, Brennan. Uh, what uh, What do you think of uh, today's news? Well, that's this is rather al alarming news, I fear. This is not good news uh, to hear that uh, everything seems to be in complete chaos over there. What would calm and your nerves? What 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 is What is like the one thing that they could do to calm your nerves? Well, I think that if they just hired the people and then didn't fire them, that would be nice. <laughs> but, you know, everything's kind of shaky right now. Well, we're getting uh, information now from someone on our Facebook chat who is telling us, uh, Mr. Brennan Marr, and welcome to the show. He's telling us that they're already written, all the scripts for the season are completely written, and the writers are only on a hiatus for a few months. Well, uh, mm, I am pleased. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure until I hear actually from Amazon Studios themselves. I'll have to wait That's and see. True. I'll have to wait and see. This is intriguing, though. It's intriguing. We're, again, we're, but we're, we're, we're just the conduit of, of information. I, um, it, it's, yeah, it, I, go ahead, Brandon. I think that that's the, in, the interesting part is the sources. Uh, I noticed that in, in our modern age, 
it's hard to know what's true and what's not. That's right. Everybody is reporting something. That's right. So, like Cliff, like Cliff, I'm going to wait till Amazon says something. I and I getting too attached to rumors. Well, I hope they say something soon. Uh, (laughs) You know, we uh, our nerves need to be calm. You know, yeah, it, exactly. It, even something as exactly. simple as the director allowing to post we, from the set or something like that. You know, yes, yes. We that might, would be very, very comforting. Brennan, we, it's great to hear from you. I appreciate hear, uh, hearing your input and your opinion. You're always a, a valuable part of the show. Thanks for calling. Thank you oh, kindly, well, I Thank you. I thank, thank you so much. Excellent. Great to uh, hear. Nice. To also, to also add to that, if we're going to wait for some official word, and if Amazon is going to correct this reporting, <laughs> so that would be cool if they issue a corrective and say they really are not fired. They're just taking a little holiday or a hiatus, All whatever that means. But if it is March, the beginning, the very beginning of March now. Yes, it's March. It is March. And the there eyes are, are upon us. Ah, on the 15th of this month will be the Ides. Now, right now, you're looking at... <laughs> If, if I'm not wrong, 10 more months of the year, that's a long hiatus. That, that's what I'm saying. Like The Tolkien estate was trying to prevent gaps in production and schedule so they exactly. don't lose quality people. But as of right now, what we've heard is because they've put season one on hiatus and they're not going to film season one until November or December, that they're losing quality people. And writers got to write. And... People got to pay the bills. Supervisors got to supervise. You know, actors <sighs> got to act. Yeah, um, that people got to make a living. They got to make their, pun- you know, they're still punching the time clock and working a job. Yeah. Uh, but the, the, the point, the point, is, the big, the big frustration I have is that when you're filming, while you're filming, the writers are deeply involved because you might change things because you can't get a certain shot. Here is Ellen contributing. Uh, the standard practice for the industry might not be that way, uh, Nolan, that they would let a long hiatus happen normally. Once you've hired writers, you usually keep them on through production. It is uh, very difficult to get the entire team back on after a month's long hiatus. That's right. It's possible, but it's not the standard practice. Yeah, if you're on the show and you're on the number one biggest IP of the 20th century, the Lord of the Rings, you hang on. You're on that. You don't. You put. You put nothing else aside. You put everything else aside, and with uh, unless it's an involuntary hiatus. And what? there's a lot of work to be done. You have the entire second age to flesh out. There is there there is a lot of work, a lot of work. Look, when there was a two film structure to The Hobbit, and it was changed dramatically. At, to be a three film structure at the end because Peter realized he was out of time and couldn't design and build a battle of the five armies to make it work and they decided let's make it a three film all right yep and there was they had that extra hiatus and that extra time to go from two films to three and to expand it which for better or for worse was a thing that happened they didn't fire everybody or lose all of their team or their carpenters or their writers or their sculptors and painters in between that they brought everybody back from the second first and second and film to the third film well I mean if you got people there already and they're bloody well working already with costumes and, and working in front at the of the camera of their ability and they're suffering injuries on set to do the stunts that have been designed you've done the previs you've done the costumes you've built the, the sets are there the people are out why there would doing you it. let those rot why right here why would you let it all just fall away and have this indefinite unknown lengthy hiatus go on and on and let all the writers go i from a human resources standpoint that makes very little That's sense to me. That's what the Tolkien estate was trying to, to prevent. Hey, we're getting another call on the hotline. This is intriguing. Hi, who's calling? Hey, it's Megan. Hey, how's it going? Well, what? Welcome. Uh, pretty what, great. Welcome to the show. So, what, I'm a, where are you from? I'm actually from Birmingham, Alabama. I love it. Wonderful. What? Uh, so, what, what's your opinion on on uh, what we're talking about today? I'm kind of concerned because I really feel like if they're going to have the writers, that they should be there during the whole process. 
I mean, if they're going to be the minds behind what's being put out there, and we really want it to be, I want it to be as, you know, contextual as possible. Um, you know what? I don't see how that, how that would happen. Don't, don't, don't <laughs> I don't you, understand. Don't you think for this particular IP, which is Lord of the Rings, that the writer is the most important creative Hello. visionary and the writer is the most important storyteller on the entire thing? Okay. Yes. I mean, we're, the, the, the entire thing started with a writer, which is our professor. So the writers are the backbone. I, that's why I don't, I don't see the point. Like, I think they should completely be involved through the entire filming, through everything. So this, if it's a hiatus or if it's firing, whichever one it is, I don't, I don't see how that even works. Even if, you, if it was the firing, how do you bring on a whole new set of writers and that actually works? Sorry, I have a bird with me. <laughs> Yeah, I understand. So let me ask you this. Uh, okay. What, what person or hiring or what can they do to calm your nerves right now? What can Amazon do to um, calm your nerves right now? Put out a statement that it's still a go, that things are going as they're supposed to, something, maybe even just a blanket statement of it's still happening. <laughs> We had to tweak some things, something. It, it doesn't even have to be the, I mean, I would rather them have kept everyone that they had to begin with if they're going to start that way. I mean, it's got to start and finish, I would feel, with the same people. Do you, but do you, it, fe do you feel that, that the lack of information uh, from Amazon on Lord of the Rings uh, uh, does disservice to this particular thing? Like, I understand when... Like, Lucasfilm doesn't want any Star Wars information to get out, right? Uh, but I feel like mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings has a different relationship with the fans, and the fans, a different yes. relationship. And, yes. And well, ju just, just, we don't have to be a part of it, but keep us up to date, because then we start talking nonsense like we are now. Yes, <laughs> yes, we get quite frightened. So, uh, <laughs> w you know, it's great to hear your voice, and thank you for calling in, and thank you for giving your opinion, and we hope Amazon is listening. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank it's you for, great to thank hear you from you guys in. on the hotline. I've got it uh, just, just below there, 530-64-FRODO. That's, really <laughs> that's really my phone number, 64-F-R-O-D-O. That's hilarious. Um, Cliff, you wanted to teach me about this game, and people in the chat room are asking, who makes this Lord of the Rings board game? Oh my god, are we really going to switch gears that fast? What a denouement. What a denouement to the show. I, I don't want to leave you hanging. Like You're not going to leave me hanging at all, but I will say this. Yes. Okay? Um, it is probably more troubling maybe to hear that Tom Shippey is no longer involved with the project at all. I would like to find out and confirm that. I'm going to look for those. Uh, I guess he's out there saying that. So that that's troubling beyond a, a level of being troubling. Let me ask you this. What if John Howe is not on set? That would be even more trouble. That would be even worse. If they posted a picture of John Howe oh my on gosh. set sketching and just... just and, and that's that would it. be comforting. If John Howe is there <laughs> yeah, sketching, that's all you need. helping them do sketches and helping the art department do their stuff, then that'd be great. But no, no words. That's all we want. No caption, no words, no, no dialogue. Just show him sketching with a bunch of things it happening out of focus in the background. Can I please permit me to say that it all comes back to fidelity to Tolkien. What we want out of this type of a series mm -hmm. is not just some kind of a, a quick hash, you know? You know that type of cooking that they call a hash, where you chop up whatever you have left around in the kitchen, there's a bit of sausage, there's some eggs, there's some cheese, yeah. and there's some peppers, and onion, and you just chop up a right. hash. And you just, it's called a, a thing like that because you hash it together, it's some made right. up thing, right? Yeah. We do not want this Middle Earth Second Age series to be a hash of some chopped up ingredients that barely has a whiff of Tolkien. It has to have fidelity, fidelity to, to, to the story that the professor so delicately and carefully constructed. We are the type of fans who are the consumers of that careful, thoughtful, mindful construction. 
When it comes to the Lord of the Rings, we are somewhat different from other fandoms, and that is because we more than anybody else appreciate the intelligent thoughtfulness and the mindfulness in how Professor Tolkien constructed his languages and his secondary world, to the point that it even gets to be called that well-earned moniker, a secondary world, because it is well-earned. He earned it. Tolkien earned the admiration of all the fans because of his thoughtfulness and his mindfulness. If they're approaching... To the work if and to the fans. And, and if, if, if losing Tom Shippey and all this other weird news we're hearing on the side means that there are not people contributing to that l level of mindfulness and thoughtfulness to the way this, this series, this television series is being constructed, then how on earth would Amazon expect to earn the same engagement from the fans and the same respect from this community when they're not giving the same mindfulness to their product. The way, that Tolkien, the way that Tolkien gave mindfulness and thoughtfulness to his world building. The estate is part of Am the community. I, the I, Saul Zantz company is part of this community. The I'm, One Ring and the, the, the fans all over social media and the internet are the community. Bookstore readers, lovers are part of the community. And now Amazon's production team is part of the community. <sighs> Be a community team. Now, Cliff, we speaking, are a community. Speaking now, of communities, the best community thing you can do is play a game. Now, with that people. I, now that I've said what I've said about fidelity to Tolkien, this wonderful board game keeps fidelity to Tolkien in a way that is. So simple and so crystallized. So, uh, Take a look uh, at your pieces what, what, here. Uh, show me the box. Like, who makes this game? This game, as I said at the top of the show, is published, printed in England by a different company, but in America, it's published by Fantasy Flight Games. There it is. See? Fantasy, Fantasy Flight, Flight Games. Fantasy Flight Games. And it's called Lord of the Rings. The, the Confrontation. Confrontation. Yes, it is called The Confrontation. And it is, See that? It is a confrontation. beautifully designed and very simple game. And you want to find it? You can go online and... The Fantasy Flight Games. Fantasy Flight Games. It's made in Germany. And it's distributed in the United Kingdom by... What does that say? As Devium Games. Okay. In the UK. Let, let, let's let's so go to an overhead cam. Let's see if do you see working. these pieces here and how they have different numbers on them? Like in Stratego. Oh, like in Stratego. Take a look, my friends. Here is our wonderful board. This is the pieces for the dark player. We're going to fan them out. Take a look at them. And we'll show you what the board game cover looks like. There it is. Do, 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 do. I'm going to turn it like this. There it is. So ah. we, we've got uh, like this map. Like. Is, this board is not map accurate. There's there's uh, uh, this board Mordor, Gondor, Daggerlad, Fangorn, board. Rohan, there Mirkwood. They're all equally sized. This is an abstraction, an incredibly abstract version of Middle Earth. Okay. It represents like a grid going across from this corner to this corner. If you have uh, if you have to explain this game. It's a two-player game like Stratego. Okay. You have pieces that have a numerical value that represent their power. All right. So let's And get they are let's hidden let's from view. For example, here's Gandalf. So we're Gandalf has a power of five. For the purpose of the cameras, we're just going to play it up. So, all right. I've got a bunch of fives. I've got a bunch of fives. You have a lot of powerful characters. And look at me. Look at my hobbits. I have Pippin, who only has power one. Mary has power two. Here's Frodo. He's also power one. You have very strong, powerful pieces, Mr. Dark Player. You have villains, and I have good guys. And uh, the design of this game is so beautiful and so simple. You're supposed to move your pieces across the board. I have to win by advancing Frodo all the way into this space, Mordor. Okay. You win by identifying which one he is and killing him. Wait, so I don't have to just dominate the lands? I have to nope. kill your you hero? You see, the pieces are like this, and you don't see them. You don't know which one is Frodo. You have to so find him I, and find him and eliminate Frodo. him. It's always Frodo. I always have to find Frodo. That's right. And all I have to do is get Frodo to move all the way across and get from one end of the board to the other, and I win. There is another way for this dark player to win who plays evil characters. You can get three pieces all the way into the Shire. Hey, which we're is the far end the of the board. Let's, let's see who's calling. Oh, yeah, calling into our live show. Welcome. Hi, who's calling? Hi, it's Arna. Where are you calling from? This, uh, Everett. 
Awesome. So, uh, welcome, what, uh, welcome. What, what's your opinion on the latest news? Well, my, the wonder is if they've uh, decided to dismiss the uh, the uh, new um, the uh, the writers. Is it possible? Is there a possible vote of getting Fran and Philippa on board? Um, that's a great question. Uh, I think that that answer is in depth. I think we'll I think we'll cover that uh, on a on another ep uh, episode because uh, uh, there's a lot of things going on with that conversation. Honestly, fr from what I've seen among the fan community, I think everyone is, um, a, a lot of people are ready to hand off the, the creative vision of Lord of the Rings to a new talented team. You know, uh, Philippa <laughs> and Fran are some of the best Oscar winning writers ever. Uh, I think they did Tolkien justice. Um, but I think we're ready to see another another creative hand take its pl uh, take their place and and make their mark. Um, what's your opinion? Um, that's a tough question to think about. It's just I want I want the show to be good, and I still think they should consider using Milford Sound. I still think they should find. I think they should be considering the wise choice of maybe casting Benedict Cumberbatch as Anatar. Um, <laughs> I even think it's yeah. a smart idea to re-involve Weta. Would you prefer, even if none of the uh, creatives are the same, do you think that this TV show of the Second Age should fit into the same cinematic universe as Peter Jackson? Well, sure. I mean, if it's a prequel to the Peter Jackson universe, I mean, unless it's like a different series, like the way Rankin Bass's 1977 make of The Hobbit is a different series to the um, Ralph Bakshi version, I guess maybe not, but I what, mean... What would you prefer? What's your gut instinct? Should this be a new, a new thing completely, or should it be related to the Peter Jackson Cinematic Universe? I would say it should be completely related to the Peter Jackson Middle Earth Universe, but... Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think I a mean, lot of people, I think I think this fandom is kind of split half and half. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who thought that uh, going back to Middle Earth is what is most comforting. The whole idea is that we get to go back. And if we go back to Middle Earth, and it seems like a very alien landscape that doesn't look familiar or even feel like Middle Earth, then that might not be as welcoming and it might not get the subscribers that Amazon needs to make this a success. Yeah, so th th there are pluses and minuses. Hey, I appreciate you calling in. It's great to hear your voice. And I, j I appreciate your opinion on, on the matters at hand. And I hope Amazon is listening to you and to all of us. Thanks for calling. Well, I'm hoping. Well, I'm hoping they consider reinvolving Alan Lee as conceptual artist, along with John Howe, in addition to Ted Naismith, maybe. I agree. Ted Naismith would be a great, great uh, landscape uh, designer for this, and I hope they as do well it. as Alan Lee <laughs> and, and Alan Lee, of course. Um, all right, great. Uh, thanks for calling. We're gonna open up the phone lines. Yes. Pr appreciate appreciate hearing your voice. Thanks. Bye-bye. So good to have you call in. Thank you. Yeah. All right, good. Cliff. Uh, landscape architect. <laughs> That's what hilarious. He's not the guy who's down there planting the shrubs and the shrubbery. No, uh, architect. Bring, Archi bring me a architect shrubbery. The visual, ar architect the visuals of, of it. Come on. Bring, bring me Naismith a shrubbery. Naismith has, has wonderful artwork that establishes shots. We are the shots. knights who say, nih, nih. We are the knights who say. All right, Cliff. I, uh, let, let's Bring me let's a shrubbery. He is not the landscape architect. Ted, let's Ted Naismith, however, would be a wonderful addition. Um, let's find Frodo. Let's find Frodo. How do you how do you how do you find Frodo? So well, I've you, got you, some. You would you would pretend if we're well, pretending. Well, we're gonna we're, we're just gonna show everybody here. So. Well, see. I've got Rohan, We can show everyone. Gondor. You would you would have four people in Mordor. Four of them. Four of them. Four okay. of them. Okay. Like I have four people in the Shire. Okay, the armies of Mordor. Uh huh. Yeah. And I have four characters, but you don't know where Frodo is. Okay. And you have one person here and one person here. And the idea is for me to mysteriously and quietly move Frodo 
all the way to the other end, from this end of the board to this end of the board, and I would win. Okay? Now, if you want to put these like this, that people can see. Now, everybody take a look at my characters, and you can see that I have Frodo right here. Right here. He's not in the back. All right, so how do we get this game started? You go first. What, what do I go? Like, I got some, I got not, some cards? Yeah, there. you've got cards. Now, here's an example. Let me just give you a simple example. Yeah, am I playing this like poker? Like, I got, mm, I got nope. some hands? No, all these are in front of you, and you get to use them as resources. They don't need to be kept secret. Okay. Okay? You have characters right here, and you get to move one space forward. Nobody else gets to move differently. You're only allowed to move one space forward. Except you have the Witch King. He's allowed to attack sideways because it's printed on his text. Okay. Okay. So I can move forward. Yep, you move one space forward. She lobbed exactly. to the Misty Mountains. Right. Now, I wouldn't know. If we were playing this game normally, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would not know. And I would take this character here and tap and say, I would move into the same space where you are, and I don't know who it is, and I say, I attack this character, and then we reveal. And we do this, and reveal to each other, duh, duh, duh. you've got... Face to face. You've got that, and this text immediately goes into place. When Pippin is attacking, he can immediately retreat backwards. So he retreats backwards, and goes into this spot here with Gandalf, and then Shelob goes back to normal. We didn't have a fight because I retreated. But I'm using the Pippin power to sneak a look and figure out who your characters are. Okay. Get it? So now I know one piece. The others are still a mystery to me. I don't know who they are. Okay. Now I have these two characters in the same spot, and I would shuffle them behind my back, and you wouldn't know which one was Pippin and which one was a different character. You wouldn't know. I switched okay. them up. So my turn. Your no, turn. Now it's your turn. turn. All now right. You can since move, you, move since one you space know, forward. Since you, you already know Shelob, so I'm just going to... No, I don't know. I pretend that I don't know. Okay. Well, well, you do know because you just went to battle. Okay. Well, I do. Yeah, I do know who that is. That's true. Yep. That's true. All right. So I'm going to take this character and I move this character here. I take Frodo, move him into the space with Sam. Okay. Okay. And I don't know that. You I, do I, not I, know. I don't know that. <laughs> Correct. All right. Whee! And I guess that's six o'clock. Is that, is, that uh, is that the six o'clock alarm? Yes. Choo choo. That's the time. So. If you succeed in getting three villains all the way across the board, you would win. If you find out who is Frodo and kill him, you would win. Yes. Okay, so, so I, sti uh, I still think that this could be Frodo. You I might know. know. Yeah, you might not know. So I want to move forward again. Okay, so you move forward again. Okay. Perfect. Now, now, now it's my turn. And I take this character and I move him into the Misty Mountains. And I don't know that that's Gandalf. You don't know. It, so, you so think it might, you have a 50-50% knowledge thinking it might be Pippin again coming to move forward. Can, but you don't can know. Can Shelob move sideways? No. So Nobody I, can move sideways except Aragorn, when he's attacking, he can move any square over he wants so to move. If I, so, so you've got four people in the corner, and I'm like, you know, he's probably not. Oh, you're trying to attack Frodo, huh? Well, you would move your villain into the space, and you would declare which person you're trying to kill. And I don't know any of them. So, uh, no, you wouldn't know. You'd have to announce who I'm, you're trying I'm to just kill. Gonna, I'm just going to move Black Rider forward. Oh, sorry. Our camera's right behind you, sir. We're live. Okay, that's okay. So you move right there. Okay, that's cute. Very cute. But I don't know who you're moving. That's right. I don't know who that is. Clever. Clever go. Okay, so I take this character and move him here, bypassing you on the side. Okay. All right. You know what this black writer says? Read his text out loud. It says, may move forward any number of regions to attack. That's right. So if you want to move forward and hit somebody and attack them, you can go any number of spaces, which is beyond the rule of one space at a time. All right. So I'm, uh, I'm going to attack this guy. Okay. You would reveal Sam. That's Sam. He's got power two, and the black writer has power three. Okay. Now you play one of your cards. These have strength numbers on your cards. You play a card at the exact count of three. I don't know what you're going to play. Okay. And you add that number to him. So on the count of three, play a card. One, two, three. Wow, that was terrible. All right, so you add one more. Your black rider is three points plus one. That makes him four. I just added five points to Sam. So Sam becomes a seven. He was only two points. Now he's added that. Okay. So I win. Seven to four. You're dead. And you get taken off the table. Samwise wins. 
Uh, but now you, now you know, yeah, and these cards and, are done. And burn those cards. They're burned. They're done. All right. And that was my attack move. That was your attack. So Very now good. now it's yours. Now it's your turn. Okay, perfect. I'll take this character and move him forward. And... And you don't know who that is. I don't know. Now, see, who this that is. is so stupid because he's looking at it, knowing exactly who these characters so are. But it, you don't know who they are when you play this game. You're not supposed to know. When attacking, instantly defeat the first character. So uh -huh. boom, I'm gonna attack. Okay, and you instantly defeat Gandalf. He's dead. Just like that. Just like that. Because Gandalf's it says dead. On the thing. Because it says on All the right, thing. All right, now your turn. But now I know those are orcs there. Yes. Yeah. And I have an answer for that. Okay. I have an answer for that. Gimli. Says instantly defeats the orcs. Anyway. So now that I know who that is, I take this character and move him here to here. Moving him forward. Because okay. now I know where the orcs are. All right. Your turn. Now you see how this works. All see, right. guys, this is called The Lord of the Rings, The Confrontation. So which it's king a really can move awesome sideways game. and I move over there? Only if he's attacking. And he's not. Okay. See? There's no one to attack. Oh, okay. So he can't move sideways unless he's All right, then attacking someone. The orcs move forward. Nice. That's beautiful. And... This character moves forward. And then I'll move sideways. Not unless you're attacking someone. Oh, There's no right. one there. Okay. <laughs> now you see these arrows that are printed on the board? That means I'm allowed. The good player is allowed to go on the river and go sideways. You're not allowed to do that. Oh, all right. Oh, so, uh, I'm oh. Move my guy see, forward. I wouldn't know that was Saruman. I don't even know. I know for sure that that's Shelob. I know that the orcs are there. But if I didn't, because I haven't encountered any of these other pieces, I don't know who they are. Right? So you move there, right? Saruman moves from there to there. Your turn. Here's my response. Move. Attack this character. Gimli defeats the orcs. Bye-bye. You're dead. All right. Orcs, orcs are gone. Orcs are gone. Your turn. Right. And now you know Gimli is there. Saruman we don't even have to go to the part of counting. Forward. Yeah, we don't even have to see what the numbers are. It's just that text takes precedence. Okay. All right. Now this character moves forward. All right. Your turn. And I think I think that uh, this he's guy not might adjacent to you. He, there's no one to attack. Okay. Oh. Ha 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 ha. Get it? Okay. There's no one to attack there. All right. So I'll go here. Perfect. Samwise is coming to back up Frodo, because when Samwise is in the same space with Frodo, his power is not two. It's five. He's much more powerful, and he can combat on behalf of Frodo when they're together. All right, Flying Nazgul says Flying Nazgul. may attack a single good character anywhere on the board. So I'll attack this one. Oh, boom! I, I, have a th I, have, I have a feeling. Yes, okay. Flying and you hit Nazgul. Frodo. Very nice. How about that? So Frodo's text says when attacked, he may retreat sideways. And he does. He retreats right there. Done. Okay. Your turn is over. That was a nice attack, but I retreated sideways. Okay. Nice. My turn? Now you know who Frodo is. <coughs> That's nice. Okay, now here's here's my here's my next turn. Yes. Um, isn't that fun? That? Isn't that fun? That smoke is just crazy. I love it. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> and yes, you know, you definitely know that that's Frodo. Okay, I... Uh, uh, you can attack again with the Witch King so and I, with I, the Flying Nazgul if I you want. I play Warg. It says, enemy's character text is ignored. That is the most dangerous character to play against Frodo, so, is the Warg. Do you so know why? Why? Because he stops his text from working. He can't escape. Okay. All right, so now you've got to play a card on the count of three. Play a card. On the count of three. Yes. All right, you ready? Yes. One, two... Ready? One, two, three. Okay, you are at power six plus two is eight. eight, and I am only four added to one, so I'm five. You win, you just defeated Frodo. Frodo is done. If you had not defeated him at all, and that didn't work out, yeah. on my next turn, I would have won because I would have stepped into Mordor, and it doesn't matter that you have enemies there. As me arriving in the space, I would so have won. So I defeated you at the... Barely, at the last possible second. Yes. And you see, ladies and gentlemen, that is the quick and easy fun game of Lord of the Rings, The Confrontation. All right, you know, I love How that we played that? this board game because... Well, it wasn't it's so hard, it was it? It diffused the energy that we had about uh, Amazon not hiring back the Lord of the Rings writers. Um, and, and all the other stuff. Well, but I, I'm, every I'm week more, dis more disturbed here. that Tom Shippey noted, published, 
Tolkien scholar, is reportedly no longer part of the production, as he has been allegedly telling people. He's, his service is no longer required. So, so we have questions. All so you need many to do, questions all you that need, need answering. Is go on Instagram and post a photo of John Howe on the Lord of the Rings set sketching, you know, in, in a quiet moment of zen. Post and we'll, post we'll be all good. Post a picture of Tom Shippey and ask, let's ask, is this true? Are the rumors true that he's no longer part? Because w whatever's happening, that they lost all of their writers, that they're only they're making... They're on hiatus. They're only making with, one or two episodes. With not a guarantee to come back. And then this... And who they're knows? They're not even making two episodes. They've written, supposedly written the scripts for the entire first season of 10 episodes. Now, this is... They put this that is season on hiatus. They're shooting a pilot that may or may not be thrown away if they don't yeah, like what exactly. they Yeah, exactly. It may or may not ever see the light of day. And that's good. We only what? want perfection. Okay. If okay. you don't okay. like okay. what they see... Look, if Tom okay. Shippey uh, reviews the, the, the first episode and says, this ain't going to cut it, uh, I hope... I hope Amazon is smart enough to listen to the experts. There's a lot of weirdness going on. I'm so not sure, but we are hearing strange whispers in the wind, but also confirmation, stuff that's really real, that they're not doing a full 10-episode first season. Amazon yet. is only... It's on yet. hiatus. It, it, the on whole show is on hiatus. But I, I, I'll, like I said earlier in the show, this is very unexpected, and I would have thought that with that type, type of money and the resources they have available, that... This, there would have been a much more fruitful engagement with making and producing this the show I th on this level. I think what's I just don't, I, I'm, a, I'm Whatever perplexed. they're filming right now with J.A. Bayona down in New Zealand is a contractual <laughs> obligation because they are contracted I mean, destroying to the bar because put I'm into so production agitated. by now. Otherwise, Amazon would have lost the license. Okay, so that's true. Yeah, they didn't want to so lose the license. But Amazon is, dry, is ki keeping <laughs> hold of the license. Cliff, this has been a fun show. We're here... At Scum and Villainy it's been every quite Tuesday a revealing at show. five o'clock p.m. Thank you for joining us online, watching uh, on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter. And whenever you post that picture of John Howe sketching against a beautiful, elegant landscape, hashtag fidelity to Tolkien. That's what Peter Jackson gave us, mostly. About 85 percent of it was grand scale fidelity to Tolkien. And you know what? At least that kind of thoughtfulness and mindfulness should be in place with Amazon Studios throwing all their resources at this second age Numenorian, we don't, we don't and know And hire it's Weta Workshop. It might not this even be in Numenor, but there might be Numenorians Whatever in it. Whatever Weta Workshop we says know yet. it costs to make this show, trust yeah. them and yeah. hire okay. them. Just Jeff Bezos is the richest man in the history of the world, I just running say, the most expensive, most valuable country, uh, and all that worship, Company all that history, all that worship, world. all that worship at Mammon's altar does not guarantee that they're going to adapt Tolkien well. So again, hashtag fidelity to Tolkien. That's what we want. That's what we ask. And thank you for being part of our weekly live stream show at theonering.net, forged by and for the fans of J.R.